I'm Glenn Schwartzberg, and I'll be your host today for What is Exolytics? So let's start with a little bit of history. The Exit Data, the first big appliance, was introduced by Oracle in 2008. It was quickly followed by the Exologic Box in 2010. As we move forward to 2012, Oracle announced the availability of the Exolytics Box, the first in-memory appliance that was specifically for business intelligence and S-Space. There are five things that I would like you to remember about the Exolytics box. The first thing is it's really powerful hardware. We'll see that in just a minute. The second thing is it's tuned for analytics. It's specifically made for doing things like S-Base retrievals, planning, and OBIEE. It's a fully integrated system. And what I mean by that is that it is tested together, certified together, packaged together, deployed together, upgraded together, managed together, and supported together. So you don't have the issue of knowing when you have a problem that, well, the hardware vendor says it's the software, the software vendor says it's the hardware. You have one place to go, and it's all integrated. And you'll see in a few minutes, it's a pretty good price. And what makes it more appealing is you can take one of these boxes and you can actually virtualize it using Oracle Virtual Machines to create up to four VMs. And on one of the boxes, even more so by subpartitioning that even further. So let's talk about the really powerful hardware. There are two versions of the Exolytics out right now. You have the X5-4. The X stands for Intel-based versions. And this machine comes with 2 terabytes of RAM, upgradable to 3 terabytes, a 7.2 terabyte hard drive, 4.8 terabytes of PCL flash. You can get up to 72 cores on that, which are Xeon E7 8895V3 chips. And those chips are really interesting in that they were made specifically for the Exolytics box. They actually have multiple processor speeds on them, and if you have a light workload, it shuts down some of the processors and speeds up other processors. So it's a variable speed chip to maximize your performance. With hyper-threading, those chips can go up to 144 logical processors, and you don't get any penalty until you exceed the first 72 processors. It comes with high-speed network cards, a couple of InfiniBand cards to connect to the other EXA series products, uh, high-speed Ethernet. It comes with the Linux OS operating system. So let's talk a little bit about real world, about some of the things that I've talked about here. The first thing is, is not all of the disk is available for all of the applications. So, for example, I told you that you have 7.2 terabytes of hard disk. Well, depending on how you partition that, if you're using RAID 1 or RAID 5, you get less usable disk space. So if you're doing a RAID 1 configuration, you get 1.2 terabytes. If you're doing a RAID 5, you get 3.6. In addition, just like the hard drive, the flash of 4.8 terabytes, really depending on if you're using a RAID 5 or RAID 10 configuration, you'll get less space. And if you use the Oracle virtual machines, you actually don't get those InfiniBand connections like I spoke about in the previous slide. The next machine is the T5-8, and T stands for Solaris. And this uses eight Spark T5 3.6 gigahertz processors. So you get up to 128 cores. You get more memory, four terabytes of RAM, 6.4 terabytes of flash, 9.6 terabytes of hard drive, and you get more high-speed network cards. And this runs on the Sun Solaris operating system. Now, Oracle is the first to admit this is a slightly slower machine than the X series. 
the difference between the machines when trying to make a decision is the number of users you're going to have. The T5-8 is really meant for larger scale consolidation. It can handle a lot more simultaneous users than you can get with the X series. So that's the biggest difference. And with this one, you don't have an issue with OVM because by definition, Sun Solaris, you're already going to get at least one virtual machine so it was designed to handle the InfiniBand connections. So what is included when you buy an Exolytix? The machine does not ship with any software. You install all of the software yourself. There is separate licensing for the software, but you can install any of the BI Foundation Suite software, Oracle Linux, 64-bit or Solaris on the T-series. The minimum version of OBIEE is 11.117. You can do 11.119 or what just came out, 12C. S-Base, the minimum version is the 11.1.2.X series. Indeca is the X5-4. Times 10, which is an in-memory database, 11.1.2.2 or you can use Oracle 12C in memory, or you can use SBase ASO to do caching. Other software that can be installed, planning, financial reporting, HPCM, Hyperion Profitability Cost Management, Hyperion Financial Management, and as of the first release on 11.1.2.4, that was only on the X series. Um, patches have come out to also allow it to be on the Solaris box, the T-Series. And because this is, a, this is just a Linux box or a Sun Solaris box, you could put other software on it that you would like. So I told you the cost was pretty good. The Exolytics X5-4 is about 175,000 for the machine. The T5-8 is 330,000 and there's additional cost for software and support, and you may be able to get discounts on this. This is the list prices, so this is the, the basic. I will say that even trying to get commodity hardware with the same specs, you would come close to these prices if not exceed it. So if you think about an Exolytics compared to on-premise software, you know, if you're using on-premise, you know, bought hardware, it's really going to be, you know, a standard car. If you're looking at Exolytics, it's like driving a Ferrari. You're going to get better speed. You're going to get better performance. You're going to be able to scale better. So it's highly recommended that you go with the Exolytics. And for the price, it's well worth it. Remember the five things. Really powerful hardware. Tuned for analytics. Fully integrated system, pretty good price, and you can virtualize it using Oracle virtual machines.